Thank you for joining us for this very important edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, November 14th, 2011, and we have several special guests joining us this evening. Jason Burmus is one of them, uh, but we have another surprise guest joining us as well, so you'll want to stay with us throughout the transmission. You know I like surprises. Uh, first off, the European Union is basically collapsing into the New World Order, as we predicted it would do. Every country that's taken over, trillions of dollars are demanded by the very central banks that created the derivatives, and then we're told a few weeks later, that didn't fix anything, now we need a total dictatorship. But it was the uh, founders of the European Union who bragged that it was really a receivership to take over the sovereign countries and fully collapse their sovereignty into a banking dictatorship. And finally, publications like the London Telegraph are starting to do their homework. Headline, the EU's architects never meant it to be a democracy. The rise of a technocracy was always part of the plan for Europe. Kind of like three years ago when the editor, foreign affairs editor for Financial Times of London wrote, and now for world government, that was the headline. And he said, yes, it's authoritarian. Yes, we kept it secret. Yes, it's global government, but it's for your own good. Goldman Sachs knows best, and Goldman Sachs put its alumni into all the presidencies and prime ministerships of these countries. They got them over the central banks of the countries, and now they are taking them down and jacking up the taxes, cutting the benefits, all to pay the debts created by Goldman Sachs because the public is totally confused and doesn't know what's going on. But the globalists now want to rub it in to the slaves. It's like, look at you, you poor dumb yuppies. All you care about is acting trendy. Let us in Time Magazine call for a bank of the world to save everybody. And in fact, they say, do Greece and Italy amount to bankers' coup? Yeah, the bankers know best, as I heard Bloomberg Radio talk about and CNBC a few weeks ago. They said, don't worry, we'll get rid of all democracy in Europe and bring in a banking dictatorship. You pay your VAT, sales taxes, and carbon taxes to... Again, we bail out the banks, and then we pay them interest on the money we pay them. You can't make up the magnitude of this. Paul Watson wrote an article this morning at PrisonPlanet.com. Banker coup, Goldman Sachs, takes over Europe. Financial terrorist who caused collapse poses EU debt crisis saviors. Over 90% of the debt in Greece, Ireland, and other countries, we told you it would move to Italy and then Spain, Portugal, and others, over 90% of it is derivatives that they got the governments to sign on to the bankers too big to fail. So the bankers sell all this, get government to sign on to too big to fail, and then, oh, we're bankrupt, we got to raise your taxes to pay the bankers their bailout money. And the bankers ride in on a white horse and say, we're going to cut all your budgets, take your pension funds, raise your taxes, and the media that they own says, thank God they're there, thank God they did this, except in one place, Iceland. Remember two years ago, they told them, oh, you owe hundreds of billions of dollars, a population of less than 400,000 with all their resources, all their oil from natural gas uh, drilling, all their petrochemical money. And then they rioted, basically, and also just didn't comply with the government for over a year. And then it came out and they said, oh, England was going to sue them and mark all the Icelanders as terrorists. Literally, that was in the BBC, that they wouldn't be able to travel to England or Europe anymore. They didn't sign on to their debts. Finally, the head finance minister had to step down and turned out 91% of the debt was not owed by Iceland. It was owed by the mega banks who'd gotten their operative to sign the country on for them. Ireland, the head of their central bank, said it's good for Ireland to be owned and run by foreign banks. That was a quote earlier in the year. This is just the treason. Traitors in America, traitors in Ireland, traitors in Greece, tra uh, traitors everywhere. This is being done all over the globe. We're going to cover this more with one of our guests this evening. Now, let's shift gears into the story of Ron Paul. Whether you love Ron Paul or hate Ron Paul, a guy who predicted everything that's now happening, the inflation tax, the New World Order, the Bank of the World, <coughs> a true constitutionalist with a perfect constitutional voting record. He actually follows uh, the founder's uh, system. Now, if, if you don't like that, you hate America as well, not just Ron Paul. Well, Ron Paul, we've seen this now in over 10 debates, gets the least amount of time. And we've shown the numbers. Usually Mitt Romney gets 12 minutes and Perry gets 10 and so on and so forth. Normally Ron Paul gets around four minutes, ne never more than five. 
But there's a new low. CBS, and, the, and their email got leaked now, CBS decided to not give Ron Paul basically any time, but to not cause a stink. They said, well, we'll at least let him be there. And, he, and they told the moderators only 90 seconds. We first uh, started reporting on this. Drudge Report linked to it over the weekend. Now it's a big scandal. <clears throat> and uh, it turns out Michelle Bachman, uh, also there was an email out to suppress her and only give her a couple minutes. So they're very scared of Congressman Ron Paul. But we've got some new breaking news here for you. And this was dug out by one of our listeners that sent us tips. Uh, Rob Dew, one of our researchers and the director of the news, he spent a lot of the time today researching this and did indeed confirm that the uh, YouTube video that we have of CBS News shot off the television and the screenshots we've got are indeed the same poll. And we've seen this over and over again. Ron Paul will get first, second, or third place and they'll just remove him wherever he placed and then never mention him and then give whoever was below him his slot. Well, he won the CBS News poll, as he's won most polls. And it was geolocated, you can only vote once. He won that. CBS News just completely removed the poll, ran a fake one, and we got screenshots of that off their website, where Ron Paul is removed. And then after they'd shown it on TV, a day and a half later, they put him back up on the screen. So uh, there's the first one. Who is your choice for the Republican presidential nomination? Uh, that was on November 12, 2011. Yes, same day, Ron Paul still winning. Okay, there's your numbers right there. Now here's the video. And a CBS News poll released just before the debate showed that Kane was leading the pack with 18%. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich were tied for second with 15%. From the CBS And a CBS News poll released just before the debate showed that Kane was leading the pack with 18%. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich were tied for second with 15%. From the CBS by the way, I, I see this over and over and over again. In fact, go back to that first graphic. She's going off the same poll. Th that's the poll they're announcing. They have it posted. They simply skip Ron Paul and just go on to the next person. And then we have it from later in the day. They just simply make up whatever numbers they want and then never even mention Ron Paul. And, and we've probably written 20 or 30 articles or more on this where it, they're caught doing this everywhere. Jon Stewart famously cut together all the pieces showing them just ignore Ron Paul when he got second place. Remember that? In, in the Iowa straw poll. They would mention first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. They'd mention people with 1% of the vote, but not Ron Paul. Not Ron Paul. When he wins straw polls, they won't mention him. Now, let's show a, a, a day after this happened, then they bring the old poll back up and post it and change the title, but it's the same poll, same page. So, uh, there you have it. And they do this over and over and over and over again. In fact, we ought to do a piece tomorrow night, Rob, a news director here, where we go back, and we can't show you know all the dozens of examples, but show five or six where they've cheated him in polls, or where he was number one, and they don't even mention him, or number two, they don't mention him, number three, they don't mention him. And now, he gets 89 seconds. The memo said 90, but he got eight, uh, 89 seconds. Just incredible. It, in fact, here's a quote from the memo from CBS News. Ron Paul silenced by CBS and then it goes over the quote. Uh, CBS News political analyst then responded, okay, let's keep it loose though, since she's not going to get many questions and she's nearly off the charts in the hopes that we can get someone else. That's referring to Bachman. So what did the media do today? Instead of focus on Ron Paul getting the least amount of time and clearly being the black sheep being ignored because they're scared of him, they focus on Bachman who also got cheated. Okay, continuing with Ron Paul coverage here, uh, we have a headline at Infowars.com, Sabrin, fed behind effort to ignore Ron Paul. That's what he talked about on a television interview he did. In the video below, uh, Murray 
Sabrin, a professor of finance at the Ansfield School of Business at Ramapo College in New Jersey, says the establishment media is ignoring Ron Paul because of the fact that he is a critic of the Federal Reserve. And it goes on, for months now, we have been told that the reason Paul is routinely sidelined by the media is because he can't win the nomination and he's too far out of the political mainstream to be a serious contender. Despite this explanation, Paul continues to win straw polls and raise millions for his campaign. He consistently places in the top three, although the corporate media refuses to acknowledge this. Let's go ahead and play that clip of the professor stating the obvious. And Ron Paul is the only one that's blown the whistle on this scam that's been in effect for 100 years now, since 1913. And that's the reason Ron Paul has been blacked out by the mainstream media. You can talk about all the other things, all the other issues, but that's the primary issue. Because if you don't have control of the money by the government, prices will come down and we will have a much better economy, we'll have sustainable growth, we won't have the Federal Reserve manipulating interest rates and causing these bubbles. Okay, so there he is, uh, pointing out that the emperor has no clothes. Uh, continuing uh, now, we are going to shift gears before we go to break and look at the latest developments uh, in Happy Valley or Satanic Valley or whatever it is uh, there at Penn State. Petty Valley. Or, uh, you know, the point is you've got the prosecutor missing for six years who no-billed the investigation. You've got police who were told 18 years ago about the raping going on reportedly. Uh, you've got huge cover-ups all over the place. This is par for the course for the establishment. But I thought I would give you the latest developments on this. Not just the news reports coming out that uh, he was reportedly pimping little boys out to the donors. Now the judge who released him, the judge that released him lowered his bail from $500,000 and ordered that he be freed on a hundred thousand unsecured bail. Well, it turns out that uh, this this judge works with and volunteers for the Second Mile Foundation. Isn't that just special? Uh, continuing here, Merck's Kenneth Frazier is to head up the Penn State uh, investigation. Talking about preying on children, having Rick Perry come out and lie and say it's the law that all schoolgirls in, in Texas have to take the Gardasil shot to bluff people into taking it. And then uh, Merck, uh, knowing that government liability protection for vaccine damage would kick in and Vioxx and all the other things that uh, they've done. Frazier is literally a dark uh, ringwraith type captain uh, of this New World Order uh, institution, another dark servant uh, of the uh, globalist operation, uh, just like David Rockefeller and the rest of them, just truly sickening that uh, he's going to be sent in there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got witnesses saying, and, and a lot of corroborating evidence, that uh, th th this uh, head assistant coach uh, was, uh, head assistant head coach was raping people in the showers in full view of others, and then you, the police covered it up for all these years, and even though all these parents were complaining and the second mile never kicked him out and just continued delivering the troubled children up to him, where there's one cockroach, there's hundreds. This is widespread. You can bet your bottom dollar on it. Uh, continuing, uh, the head of charity founded by Sandusky uh, has resigned. They're now removing the names of all the famous people like Jack Ham. Uh, Franco Harris, Dr. Bryce Jordan, Arnold Palmer, Mark Wahlberg. And again, it's not saying any of these people are involved in this type of activity. These are well-meaning people. Most of them, they're trying to help. Uh, but the point is, is that um, this is just a nightmare situation we've got going on with this. Um, they're now uh, removing their names from it. And then, of course, uh, we also, do we have a graphic of his book? When I saw this on the Drudge Report last week, I almost thought it was a joke, but Sure enough, it's, it's, it's confirmed. Uh, his title was touched, the Jerry Sandusky story, and they're still selling it uh, in the uh, school uh, to this day. And, of course, we have a graphic, too, of our team, Board of Directors, Honorary Board uh, of the Second Mile Foundation. Truly, truly heart-rending. One other uh, note here before we go to break, come back with our first guest. 
We have a big investigative report right now up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com uh, that is, we'll just hold right there until we get the thing up. Yeah, we're, we're going to this now. I, I didn't see that in my... Uh... Okay, l let's go back to full screen. Let's go back full screen this. Let's, let's go. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and finally, as we try to break up in this nest of uh, child abusing roaches, we have the report that Sandusky's home, now that he's out on bail, thanks to his good friend, the judge releasing him, um, is backed up to the playground at a elementary school. Spiders like to build their webs near little bugs, little flies they like to eat. These little flies happen to be our children. We have a clip on that. When he was charged with 40 counts of sexually abusing children, Jerry Sandusky was released on $100,000 bail. One condition, the former Penn State defensive coordinator was told not to go near children. But take a look where his house is located. This is the playground for Lamont Elementary School. Right over here is Jerry Sandusky's house. And from his back porch, he has a clear view of it. We've got a video I played on the Sunday news show that we were going to play tonight. Maybe we'll play it tomorrow where he's with 15-year-old kids playing football. And he's getting up behind them, grabbing on them. And it is, it is really disgusting. And I tell you, you got to ask yourself in football why there's all that butt slapping and all that stuff. I mean, I mean, this is this is this is something else. And now they want to have all this sex education for even elementary kids. They want to put it in their minds. TSA is training our children to be groped. All this big TSA stuff broke through last November when Drudge Report linked to my report of Michelle in my office where they tried to have a man search the diaper of her one-year-old child at the time and her seven-year-old daughter. She said, no, get a woman to do it. Woman, man, whatever. I mean, this country has is, is been taken over by a bunch of pedophiles, and they're conditioning us so they can prey on us. Pedophiles test kids by touching them. I'm telling you folks, I've studied it. I, I never knew this was going on 17 years ago when I got on radio, but people kept exposing it, bringing the information to me. Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, all pedophilia-based. All these systems. I mean, we've allowed a very sick group of people to get in control. They want control of the government, so they have government power to get away with this. Don't you understand that? Every government gets taken over by tyrants and builds torture chambers and dungeons because the psychopaths want the power. Now, finally, before we go to break, geoengineering our environment under attack, a huge in-depth report that's up at Infowars.com. The greatest public health threat can no longer be denied. This is just a prelude to a big report we're doing tomorrow night where we prove there's massive geoengineering going on, releasing barium salts, aluminum dioxide, sulfur dioxide that is brain damaging and killing the population and that it's actually all admitted to be going on. In plain view, it's just under different names than chemtrails. So we're going to be going over all of that coming up tomorrow night, documenting how long they've been doing it, why they're doing it, how widespread it is. Indirect and semi-direct aerosol campaign. We're going to get into all of this. It's hidden in plain view. Coming up tomorrow with a special report. I just want to say great job to the crew uh, getting all that news and graphics and information together tonight. We're going to come back and talk to Jason Burmas. And then we have another special guest who's going to be joining us as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.
We are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. Don't forget, uh, through the month of November, we're offering a 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv. You can see all of my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, all the expanded extras from my 20-plus films, including Jason Burmes' documentary, Invisible Empire. It's all there at PrisonPlanet.tv. And your support, your subscriptions, funds this growing alternative media operation that is teleprompter free and we are fighting for the future. We are fighting for the present. We are fighting for the hearts and minds of the people worldwide. The only way to defeat the globalist is by exposing the fact that they are completely out of control and do not have the general public's best interest in mind. We've got to expose that. We've got to educate the people that the New World Order is a tyrannical organization that must be defeated. Now, joining us from New York is investigative journalist and filmmaker, radio talk show host in his own right, Jason Burmas. And he has pointed out that if you go back uh, to a month ago, uh, to the sports writer that finally forced 18 years of cover-up out into the open, Mark Madden, that his investigative piece was titled Sandusky, a state secret. And you know, going back a few weeks ago, I said this is probably like the Texas Youth Commission report, where the, the Texas Rangers got evidence, tried to stop it, but were blocked by the legislature and discovered that all over the state of Texas, young babies being taken by CPS, but even more prevalent was young teenagers, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old in the juvenile justice system at facilities all over the state were being pimped out, pimped out to judges, police, and bigwigs. This is the elites, I guess, uh, forbidden enjoyment. Most of us vomit to even think about it or begin to have violent feelings towards the pedophiles because I have small children. Anybody touches my children, you're dead. Not gonna have to wait for court, dead, you understand? And it, it's that old-fashioned attitude that always had these vampires at bay. Now they're in there brainwashing the kids with sex education to test the youth, to see who they can target. They've got their pedophile training group, the TSA, now hitting the streets, pulling families over, groping babies' genitals, uh, your wife's breast. This is all part of an indoctrination program. And with breaking news, Jason Burmes has done some in-depth research into this, uh, now it's starting to come out that it's rumors of donors coming in and raping the children. No, ladies and gentlemen, where there's one disgusting globalist cockroach, there's more. We've seen this in Europe. We've seen it at Bohemian Grove. We've seen it at Skull and Bones. This is what's going on time and time again. The elites are protecting their minions. Even when they get caught, they're getting very light sentences. Just like the judge let him out on a... Uh, $100,000 bond that was not even secured. Unheard of. It should have been at least a million dollar unsecured. Uh, you've now got the big Merck people coming in to try to protect Sandusky and the rest of them. This guy in front of witnesses was reportedly raping children for 18 years in the middle of the field house. This is a widespread phenomenon. We've got a prosecutor who's dead came up missing over this, believed dead, who no billed it. We've got all these other weird deaths, just like the Franklin cover-up. So here to break it down and parallel it to some cases in the UK is Jason Burmes. Uh, we're also going to work to get uh, Mark uh, Madden on. Uh, but this goes to the heart of how pedophiles and other forms of psychopathic control freaks, because there's a whole legion of different types of these scum, get together and always want authority so they can carry out their crimes. And Sandusky had his house right behind the elementary school playground. The list goes on and on with these predators. They must be dealt with. You know, I showed a statistic last week. You're five times more likely in government custody as a child to be physically abused, 17 times more likely than any other group to be sexually abused. From my research, around half the CPS workers are hardcore pedophiles. These are dangerous people, folks, but they've got to be faced down. They take kids for no reason from parents they fall down and break a finger or something and give them to, to a group who is known to be the biggest abusers ever, you cannot argue with those numbers. Look them up for yourselves. Just, just Google. 
uh, CPS five times more likely to abuse children than any other group. You'll get the statistics from mainstream news, including Time Magazine, Newsweek. Okay, let's go to Jason Burmas now uh, to, to, to have the floor and break down this tip of the iceberg Sandusky situation and why the system's so desperate to cover this up. Jason, good to have you here with us. Thanks for having me, Alex. Let, well, let's roll it back to where you said the judge let him out on a $100,000 bond. She was heavily involved in the Second Mile Foundation, which this guy founded. Now, you bring it back to Mark Madden. Mark Madden actually broke this story back in April of this year, and nobody paid attention to it. In fact, he was laughed at, and he just kind of took it in stride. Now it breaks loose. He goes on a local uh, talk radio show, a sports show, and talks about how this is the tip of the iceberg, and there are two prominent columnists working on the story of Sandusky and the Second Mile Foundation trafficking in children. And don't think it's not here, folks. Uh, in the UK, for instance, it broke that in uh, July, they convicted a gentleman, 32 years old, Anthony Harrison, and he was trafficking in young girls within the United Kingdom. And he only gets 20 years. What's with these light sentences? By the well, way, tell him what he was trafficking uh, uh, them for. For voodoo rituals, uh, which is extremely bizarre. And in, it, it kind of parallels a case there, uh, which was the first case they ever found, they said, in the United Kingdom of voodoo ritual sacrifice, where a young five-year-old was flown in from West Africa. He was paralyzed. He wasn't given an anesthetic. He was paralyzed through a drug, repeatedly raped, and then dismembered as all of his blood was drained out of him. Who are these people? And why do they have any power whatsoever to cover up these acts? We have to take notice of that. By now, this story should have broke. So I hope and pray that there are good journalists out there really willing to risk their skin because we've had journalists come up dead in the past. If you look at the Franklin scandal, for instance, a guy named Craig Spence, who was, he started his career as a journalist in Vietnam, in Southeast Asia for NBC. He becomes a Republican lobbyist and entangled in this scandal. And he's found dead in his hotel room in 1989, just uh, I think it was days after the story breaks on the front of major newspapers with the credit card receipts of prominent people on the cover and within the story. So this is very important, folks. This, this really, we have to get beyond this church of football and this worship of Joe Pa and Paterno. And believe me, being in upstate New York, I'm only about 70 miles from Scranton. And I've lived in Philadelphia, and this guy is like a god, even up here. I mean, people can't believe it. But the bottom line is, if you witness somebody raping a young boy in a shower, how is it that you are elevated to assistant coach? And how is the coach able to maintain his job for well over a decade? Well, you and I know the answer. Everything is compartmentalized. People go along to get along. And the fact of the matter is, this is going to sprawl out into some very prominent people. Well, look, 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 he wouldn't be reportedly, although these witnesses raping people right there in the middle of the field house, which is a very public place for anybody that's played football. The folks don't know. It's, it's coming and going all hours of the day. I mean, this just shows this was mainline. This is somebody obsessed with children. Have you seen the videos of him with high school students when he's, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, where he's grabbing on them? And I mean, it looks like something out of, uh, I mean, it's incredible. But Jason, well, they set these foundations up, Alex, to prey on these young boys. I know you point this out again and again, but we have to be so aware of these supposed charitable uh, organizations. Remember Boys Town. Let's stop right there because let's go back. Uh, you cover this. Uh, I mean, I cover it some in our dark secrets inside Bohemian Grove. But to try to go over all the examples, it would take hours. But in Invisible Empire, by the way, that's on DVD at InfoWars.com if folks want it, or if not, it's, it's, it's free on YouTube. The point is, get it out to everybody. You look at the psychology of the globalists and the crimes they're known for committing, the government drug dealing, the white slavery, the child kidnapping. We really look at their psychology in that film. So go back over that and, and the Jeff Gannon and the gay porn stars uh, and... Uh, all the things that are happening, all the things uh, that are going on, uh, Jason, because this is something that keeps happening over and over and over and over again. And even Richard Nixon talked about it. I mean, it's so frightening. So, uh, please continue. 
Absolutely, Alex. And it's such an important thing. We have to be aware of this. How can we let a predator class that preys on children make executive decisions that affect all of us and have really been raping us and this country for some time now? But let's go over it. This pedophile ring, which I discussed earlier, was headed by a guy named Larry King, not the Larry King from television, but this guy had literally sung the national anthem. I believe it was at the 1988 Republican convention. He was an up and comer in the game. And the reason he was an up and comer in the game is he was the main player and pimp for young boys and girls, where he would even bring them in for midnight tours of the White House. A lot of this is chronicled in both the Franklin cover-up and the Franklin scandal. If you want a 60-minute synopsis of this unbelievable tragedy that occurred in our country and is probably still occurring today, especially with cases like this, Alex, and uh, you can check it out. It's called Conspiracy of Silence. It'll blow you away. This was actually made by the Discovery Channel, funded with half a million dollars. And Congress had an emergency session where they funded them not to air this. And the only reason we have this rough copy where scenes are missing and the role isn't really finished is because it was used in court cases. It's, it's really just an unbelievable story. And what's even more unbelievable is it crept its way into Barney Frank, a current congressman in Massachusetts, still to this day, Alex, into his bedroom through a gentleman named Stephen Gobi, who was his boyfriend slash prostitute slash pimp of other young gentlemen right there and at the local Chevy Chase Elementary School where the superintendent was aware of what was going on. And just to be clear from memory, it's covered in the film, but I have the Washington Post, Washington Times. Some of the prostitutes were underage, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you look at the testimony of people like Troy Bonner, Paul Bonacci, these are 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids. Yeah, but by the way, well, even younger, but, but I mean, going back, I was talking about Barney Frank specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have the news clip on the news where they said, Frank got up and said, You investigate me, I'm going to release all the names. And it was shut down. Mm -hmm. and, and the way Nixon and others described it, you've got to at least just go to the parties where this is going on, not even be part of it, so they know you're compromised. I mean, it's like, I guess, some kind of gangs. I've heard of Mexican mafia. you got to kill an old lady or something to prove you're really evil. Uh, or other groups, you know, you got to kill a kid or whatever. And I guess with this New World Order, it's like a bunch of Nelly Ninnies where you got to rape children to be part of their evil club. And, of course, you mentioned Larry King. He was convicted. I mean, this is just so amazing. It's today, Alex. He walks the streets today. How is it in this country in 2011, we let child rapists serve short terms and then go back and do it again? Wait a minute. It's worse than that. Remember five years ago, there was thousands, was it 5,000 missing kids in Florida that CPS had taken? Mm -hmm. And it turned out the top three CPS people in the state were all convicted child rapists. This is mm -hmm. not an accident. This is an army of evil. Absolutely. And it, and it pains me to say, again, these are the people a lot of people look up to. They think are moral. They want to be like. These are the worst of the worst in the predator class that would go after a child sexually and ritualistically in anything you believe. I can't believe another human being would want to bring harm on anybody unprovoked, let alone a young child. How could you live with yourself? You'd have to be soulless, Alex. All right, let's shift gears. Catholic Church, every major country they're in, this is coming out, and cover-ups. Uh, Boy Scouts, 5,000 rapers covered up. I mean, it's every institution. They want to get into institutions because then they know the institutions will cover it up so their names don't get hurt. But in the end, that allows the scum to take over. Government, uh, the military, we now learn about... West Point and other things where there's sexual rituals at the higher levels. I mean, it really turns out, just like in ancient Rome, pervert guilds uh, are in control. Uh, where do you see this going uh, with the whole situation at uh, Pedophile Valley uh, there? Uh, I mean, because, you know, the head coach, the president, all of those board of governors, they all now, it, it's coming out new for, for now 18 years, some of them. This was going on, and, and people are saying, well, bring back you know, the, the coach. Those kids rioted, the college students, calling for their God. So what if some kids got, got raped you know, by a degenerate, uh, ugly old man? Uh, you, you know what? We need our football. I mean, it's just incredible. It's absolutely despicable. And let's talk about another institution real quick, because 
You mentioned the military. You mentioned the Catholic Church. You've mentioned the Boy Scouts. And again, not all Boy Scouts, not all Catholics. They're not all bad people. But predators use these modes, these organizations, again, to prey on these young boys. Well, I watched a clip today from, I believe it was 60 Minutes, a mainline CBS News program. And they were talking to Corey Feldman, famed childhood actor. And they said, what's the biggest problem in Hollywood today to him? And he goes, honestly, he's like uh, the pedophilia. He's like, it's not talked about. It's widespread. It was done to me. It was done to Corey Haim. And, you know, he wraps off all these people. And he's like, you know, the guy that did it to me, I guarantee he's going to watch this interview and he's going to sit there and smile. No, he's going to get away with it because these guys have gotten away with it for so long. And these are the heads of our entertainment industry as well, literally feeding us the propaganda that we we consume every day, Alex. And uh, pedophiles may be one half of 1% of the population, and they're trying to now sexualize children, just like they're selling us on torture, TSA groping children. They're trying to change our political and social atmosphere into their cesspool, and they're sexualizing the children as young as five, six, seven, uh, sell, trying to sell outfits to little girls that look like a prostitute's outfit. I mean, it is, it is scientifically done to destroy our society, and it's such a tiny group, but they're the group willing to carpet bomb villages of children, to use DU worldwide. They're the groups willing to genetically engineer the crops, to sterilize the population. And, you know, the way investigative journalist, former federal uh, criminal investigator Greg Pallas put it, and he's right, this is just a byproduct of pedophilia. These people are so wicked in the ruling class across the political spectrum worldwide for war, stealing pension funds, evil, that they're just, it's a bunch of evil people competing with each other to take over. So, of course, the most evil are going to be in positions of power. And Palace said the pedophilia thing is just a side deal. That they're all there, uh, I mean, quite frankly, from my research, it, as bad as it is, they're just raping some children. As you pointed out, they're butchering them. Uh, the snuff films that have come out of Europe that have been in the foreign press where they rape little toddlers and then blow their heads off. I mean, folks, this is in the new world order. And you know, if they can't get your kids, they'll give them a Gardasil shot to hammer their brain. You understand, folks, they're not playing games. These are literal demons directly out of a Hellraiser vortex. Okay, and they're walking around in suits and ties. They've almost converted the, the police over to being their operatives. They're taking over every institution. Boy Scouts, good organization, being taken over. And, and they must be met, they must be faced. Uh, Jason, people can learn more uh, by watching Invisible Empire. We've also had your Twitter up there for folks. Thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you uh, as this continues to unfold. Uh, 60 second final comments on any other facets we haven't covered. Well, I just want people to be encouraged to pursue this story. It's not about Joe Paterno. It's not about football. It's about a callboy ring that a predator set up through a charitable organization and the cronyism that's probably going to get this guy off in the long run. Remember, the judge that put him on bond worked for and with the foundation. We cannot allow justice not to be served in this case, folks. All right, Jason Burmis, great job. Good talking to you. Continue your work. Thank you. All right, there goes Jason Burmis. We're going to go to break and come back with our next guest and some incredible financial news and uh, basically our expert guest prognosis on uh, where the world economy is going. He's predicted so much of what has now been unfolding. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget, we've got a 15-day free trial right now at prisonplanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. And we also, uh, on top of that, are running a deal we've never offered because my main mission is get the word out and then be able to fund our operation. All 18 of my films that are on DVD, 18 films, 18 for $99.95. It's normally $359 and change. So that's a $250 plus dollar discount. And the profit we do make goes into the news websites, the nightly news, the syndicated radio show, and the tens of millions of people we reach every week. We're doing it. We're fearless. We're in the globalist faces because you can't roll over and give in to these scum. They've got to be met. They've got to be faced down. They've got to be resisted because they're not going to give us quarter. 
They come to kill, steal, and destroy. So there's the Alex Jones Everything Special at InfoWars.com or during regular business hours, you can call and talk to our great uh, customer service folks and order 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. And the mailing address is also at InfoWars.com. You know, Ron Paul only got 89 seconds in the CBS foreign affairs debate because they're scared of him. So we thought we'd show you those 89 seconds uh, right now. Uh, yes, um, tor torture is illegal, and by our laws, it's illegal by international laws. How, you, how do you define torture, sir? Well, waterboarding is torture, and, uh, and many other things. It's, Ill it's illegal under international law and under our law. It's also immoral, be and it's also very impractical. There's no evidence that you really get reliable evidence. Why would you accept the position of torturing a hundred people because you know one person might have information and that's what you do when you accept the principle of, a, of, of, uh, of torture. I think it's, it, I think it's uncivilized and have no practical advantages and it's really un-American to accept on principle that we will torture people that we capture. And Major, I, Major I have to weigh in on I have to say something. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have, let's, I have let's to say Paul. Covert operations in Syria? A I green think, light for you? I think it would be a mistake. I think the Syrians ought to deal with their country. I think but what about we should the, have what about the 3,500 dead? Well, there's been a lot of people killed throughout the world in the last century. You know, the Soviets and the Chinese killed hundreds of millions, but we didn't feel compelled morally to try to stop it. No, it's a tragedy. And it would be nice if they would accept different views. But for us to get in the middle of that and prop up the different dictatorships, this is why we get into this trouble. It's overthrowing dictatorships that we have supported that causes so much of this problem. So to get further involved, you want to have self-determination. We don't need to lose any more troops. You get in there with covert operations, then you have troops involved. Thank you, and Congressman. It's very costly. It's Thank you, not Congressman. a good idea. Governor Romney. <laughs> Congressman Paul, one minute to you, sir. I think that uh, this is a mess. It's a mess because we have a bad foreign policy. We're pretending we're at war. We haven't declared the war, but we're at war against a tactic and therefore there's no limits to it so we create these monstrosities and we do things outside the law we come up with assassinations allowing the president to decide who's going to be assassinated and lo and behold three americans now have been on the list they've been assassinated but they don't talk about the second one because the second one happened to be a 16 year old son of a Lockheed. So what are we doing here to accept this idea that our president is in this lawlessness to pursue and that we someday will be subject to those same courts? So no, you don't. You want to live within in the law and obey the law because otherwise it's going to be very bad for all, all of us. And uh, this whole idea that uh, now we can be assassinated by somebody that we don't even like to run our medical care and giving this power to the president to be the prosecutor, the executor, the judge, and the jury, we better look at that carefully before you automatically endorse something like that. Congressman, thank you very much. Could, could, Gov I, could I interject Governor, and say I'm, something? I'm, Representative Bachman, let me give you 30 seconds to pick up on that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to respond to Ron Paul and his comments because the people that the President of the United States gave orders to kill include Osama bin Laden. Now, I think all of us can agree this is a good idea for the President of the United States to make this decision. Ron Paul doesn't think so. But this was a very good idea for the president. After all, Osama bin Laden had no problem ordering the destruction of the, of the, of the Twin Towers or of the Pentagon. That resulted in over 3,000 lives. As well, um, Alaki, who we also killed, he has been the chief recruiter of terrorists, including Major Hassan at Fort Hood, including the underwear bomber over Detroit, and including the Times Square bomber. These were very good decisions that were made to take Congressman, them out. Congressman, thank you. I know Ron Paul, yes. you want to jump in, please. Right. 
I voted for the authority to go after bin Laden. I was upset because it took 10 years because we, we were diverted from uh, going after him and doing the job. But that's a lot different than assassinating American citizens. I mean, he, he wasn't a citizen. But I do want to remind you that over 300 individuals were tried in civilian courts here that were charged with terrorism here. Most of them are in jail, and I don't think we should give up so easily on our rule of law. Congressman Paul, thank you very much. Now it is time. All right, we're back, and as promised, we've got a very special guest with us this evening, uh, Jim Rogers, who needs no introduction, but he's run big funds that have raised 4,200% uh, over 10 years when the S&P went up 50%. He's obviously a best-selling author, and he's predicted uh, much of what's now happening, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. Uh, I'd, I'd like him to break down what he's accurately predicted. I've got some of the news articles here and what he sees coming up uh, in the future. His latest best-selling book is A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. Uh, and, uh, of course, you can also go to his website, Jim Rogers, that's R-O-G-E-R-S dot com. And he's also a Guinness Book of World Record holder on multiple fronts. We're going to talk some about that. Now, uh, he joins us here while he's on his exercise bike in, in the beautiful, uh, I guess, semi-tropical uh, environs of Singapore. And so uh, we turn now to Jim Rogers joining us here at InfoWars Nightly News. Jim, thank you for joining us. I am delighted. And yes, it is Singapore. We're on the equator. In Singapore, it's either always hot or always hot and raining. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I've, I've probably watched you 300 times on national television, Fox, CNBC, you name it. But I don't think I've ever seen you on a uh, exercise bike. So we're honored that you're doing this with us. Well, I'm delighted. I'm multitasking i you know try to get two things done at once so if i fall off the bike you'll be the first to know <laughs> okay jim wow now 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 listen there's a lot of stuff written in the press i want to make sure this is uh accurate a few days ago a, a bunch of reports came out that you said global collapse a done deal uh what's your view on the world economy right now and where it's going well alex every four to six years in america we've had a slowdown or a recession ever since the Republic, the beginning of the Republic. So we're overdue for one, the end of 2011, 2012, 2013. So it's going, it always happens. It's gonna happen again, despite what politicians or central bank bankers tell you. The next time around, it's gonna be very bad. It's just as, you know, 2002, we had a slowdown. 2008, it was much worse. 2012, 2013 is gonna be worse still because we shot all our bullets. I mean, the U.S. cannot quadruple its debt again. We cannot print more money again, staggering amounts of money again. So it's going to be a mess, a huge mess. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, let's talk about, because I know you don't like to toot your own horn, but I've printed up a bunch of news articles here. I remember you three, four years ago saying what they did wasn't going to work, that you'd see all sorts of currencies going down globally, that commodities was the place to go, uh, and gold's gone from 300 to 1800, silver's gone from $5 to 30 plus dollars. Uh, you're saying get into farmland. Uh, toot your own horn though, just so people can understand why you made the predictions you did. Uh, quite a bit of what you predicted's come true. Uh, break down how you were able to make those predictions, and then what you see coming uh, in the near future, and then even uh, the, the medium term. Well, Alex, I, I, partly because of I, mean, I know what's happened before in the world. In the early 1990s, Japan had a problem like this. They refused to let people fail. They propped everybody up. You remember the term zombie banks, zombie companies? Well, it's 21 years later. Japan is still suffering because they didn't accept reality. They didn't take the pain. The Japanese stock market is down 80%. That's 80% in the last 21 years because they refuse to accept reality. America's gonna have the same problem. We're gonna try to prop everybody up. That does not work. In Sweden, the same time, 21 years ago, in Scandinavia, I should say, they took the pain. It was horrible for two years, three years. But since then, after starting over, taking the losses, taking the pain, Scandinavia's had a wonderfully vibrant and dynamic economy. It just doesn't work to prop up failure. 
to reward incompetence. You have to, that's what capitalism is all about. Competent people come in, take over the failed assets from the failed people and start over. What we're doing in America, we're taking the assets away from the competent people, giving them to the incompetent people and saying, okay, guys, now you can compete with the competent people with their money. It's outrageous morality. Not that politicians care about morality, but it's horrible economics. It cannot and will not work. Well, uh, I'm certainly no rocket scientist. I mean, I'm not a guy that's made people tens of billions of dollars like yourself and you know, has a 30, 40 year track record of doing it. But studying economics, studying history, when you see a bunch of countries uh, start basically turning up the printing presses and then paying for the uh, garbage derivatives with more printing press money, uh, it seems like I've seen all these third world countries uh, go that direction. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, is that why basically you're saying that there's no way to turn this around? Or what are some of the other factors that feed into that? Well, Alex, the cure for too much debt is not more debt. Although in Washington, they seem to think, well, we had too much consumption, too much debt. So let's solve that problem with more consumption and more debt. I mean, it's astonishing that grownups would say something like that out loud. If it were that simple, every country in the world would be prosperous. But what's always happened for this, you call up debt, that fails, and then they start printing money. If all you had to do was pile up debt and print money, Zimbabwe would be the richest country in the world right now. Many countries would be extremely rich. It doesn't work. Economics is pretty simple. If you spend money you don't have, you either pay it back or go bankrupt or suffer the consequences. We've already had one lost decade in America. We're going to have two, three, four. I don't know how many lost decades we're going to have until we accept reality. OK, uh, th then just to be clear, then uh, you are saying that a global financial collapse is a foregone conclusion. No way to turn it around. No way to stop it now. Well, I'm saying yes. We're going to, the next time we have a recession, and we're going to have one, I guarantee you, it's going to be worse than anything we've experienced in the last few decades because of the stacked amounts of debt that have been built up in the U.S. and in Europe. Now, there's a way. Sure, we could, we could take an alternative course. We could accept reality. We could let people fail. All those guys on Wall Street should have failed. The idea that they're still driving their Lamborghinis is outrageous. As far as I'm concerned, they're all getting their bonuses. Outrageous, as far as I'm concerned. You and I are paying for it. We could do that. We could let them fail. We could take our pain, admit our mistakes. It would be very bad for two or three years, Alex. There's no question. It would be a mess. But the alternative is to have 10, 20, 30 years of more lost decades and lost years from our lives. All right, Jim Rogers is our guest. We're honored to have him and a, a premier uh, interview with him on the exercise bike. I'm actually loving this. I think this is pretty, pretty media worthy. And, and again, we appreciate uh, your time and joining us. Shifting gears to North America. I know you're uh, out in Singapore now and later I'll ask you why you're there and, and your prognosis in this global meltdown for Asia versus Europe. Uh, North America, Latin America, uh, Africa, you know, basically your global perspective and what you're investing in right now. But here at home, Ron Paul predicted all of this 30 years ago on sound Austrian economics. Uh, I, I, I know that you study a little bit as well. And now he is being demonized or and that's when he's lucky. They've done scientific <laughs> studies now. Uh, that show that he's getting the least amount of time at the debates, that when he does get coverage, it's negative, uh, that uh, th also when he wins first, second, or third place, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, now uh, uh, CBS, will not show him in the poll rankings. So if he gets number one, they say number two was number one. Or if he gets number three, they skip him and move number four into number three. And we just caught CBS over the weekend doing it again. It became a national news story. But wait, it gets better. It was a 90-minute debate, uh, Jim, but only an hour was televised. Of the televised debate, he was given 90 seconds. 
And it turns out a memo came out uh, when uh, Rick Perry was given on like eight minutes, Mitt Romney more than 10. I mean, if this isn't a rigged horse race, uh, what's your view on that and why they're scared of Ron Paul? Well, it's clear, uh, and I've read the same things you have, it's clear that they're biased against Ron Paul. Uh, I don't know why. I guess the only reason is because he's the only one who talks good sense. He's the only one who knows how to solve the problems. I happen to agree with nearly everything he said and have for a long time. And it's just so different to what all these journalists have been brought up reading and believing and writing. I mean, they all go to the same, the same schools where they're taught canes and failure. And so they think that this guy who's got a different view must be and let's ignore him. Unfortunately for them, he's the only one, not the only one, but he's one of the few who's got it right. And somebody, I don't know if the electorate will get it in time, but he's one of the few who knows what has to be done. Jim, looking at history, looking at geopolitical movements, looking at finance that you've studied so long and investment so accurately, and that's the real gauge of a tree is its fruits. Your fruits have been very successful and stable over a long period of time. Well, uh, seriously, looking into your crystal ball, I mean, uh, and then looking at the United States, it's clear they're not going to listen to Ron Paul. He is the only one of those Republicans that is talking sense, uh, and, and one of only a few prominent people in the U.S. talking sense. The establishment wants to go the same direction, crony capitalism, insiders being guaranteed by the public, so much you and Congressman Paul have talked about. And now the, the, the elite are financing the welfare class to be their political army to demand more and more off the tit. And I see historically real calamities, real collapse, real social unrest uh, here in the U.S. Obama has already tried to sick the Occupy Wall Street people on the middle class, claiming you know, that he's anti-corruption in Wall Street when he's financed by it. So what do you see for America and Europe? I mean, do you see a lot of really unstable things happening? Because it's clear they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to Ron Paul. They know you're right. It's why they're scared of you. So, so is this ship going to hit the iceberg? What's going to happen? What do you see? Where do you see America in five years? Well, first, there's also a guy named Gary Johnson who is running for, for nomination. He seems to get it too, as well. I mean, not he hasn't been as prominent so long as Ron has. But he also seems to get it. But what's going to happen? <laughs> it's what I've said many times. There's going to be more social unrest all over the world. We've already had some governments fail and some countries fail. Alex, and a lot worse. As the price of food skyrockets, as the economy doesn't get better, more and more people are going to be in the streets. Unfortunately, we now have <clears throat> a generation worldwide which expects free lunches. And unfortunately, the money's running out now. We cannot afford free lunches anymore. And you're going to see turmoil. You're going to see currency turmoil. You're going to see more inflation, higher prices, higher interest rates. It's not going to be fun. Be careful, Alex. Be careful and be prepared. Are you hinting at be careful being in America? Is that why you ran? I'm not saying you ran in a bad way. I'm, I'm tempted to run to Singapore or somewhere else. Is that why you've gone to Singapore? Because you have traveled the whole world. You've won the Guinness Book of World Record um, you know, for uh, traveling the world on a motorcycle, for traveling it in a car. You've been all over the planet. Is that why you've decided to uh, go to Singapore? Because I know my wife has said to me, uh, she's pretty smart. She's like, we need to get the hell out of this country because we can't even travel. I mean, the TSA wants to stick their hands down my daughter's pants. They want to grab my wife's breast. Uh, and, and my wife said to me last week, she said, listen, this is turning into Nazi Germany, and we need to be smart enough to get out of here. And I said, well, I'm going down with a ship on air. And she said, okay, but uh, I mean, is that what you're hinting at? Well, first of all, you can go down with a ship on air somewhere else now with the computers. I mean, here I am, I'm in Singapore, and you and I are having a perfectly competent, civilized conversation. That's not the reason I left. Uh, I'm sure maybe it had some factor. No, I have two little girls. They were speaking they were Chinese because I'm convinced that the best gift that I can give my children is to know perfect Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese, and to know Asia. I couldn't do that in New York. I love New York. 
you know, I'm still an American citizen, still an American taxpayer, but I want to raise my children in the 21st century. I don't like what's happening in America. I hate it. I, whenever I fly to America, I'm always a little bit worried because I know I'm going to have to go through American customs, American immigration, and I'm an American citizen. And I'm going to have to go with the TSA, and I'm always worried about that. You don't have to traveling elsewhere in the world, so you should listen to your wife. She's right, and it's getting worse. It's not getting better, but Alex, I'm here for my kids. A lot of people move to different school districts or different places where they can have a good music teacher or football coach or whatever. I'm in Asia preparing my children hope for the 21st century. It's that simple. Many people move to move for their kids. I'm moving for my kids. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You know, they call it the Chinese century that's coming up or the Asian century. Population-wise, technology, people that are willing to work hard. You know, there's still a lot of Americans that are willing to work hard. It's just that we've got to fit the bill for the rich bankers that want the bailouts and the welfare queens uh, and the rest of them. And I, I certainly have to, you know, admire your decision and, and, and courage to, to uproot New York. That is a great city and uh, move over there, but certainly Westerners who can speak perfect uh, Mandarin Chinese and that do have the connections there, they're gonna do a lot better uh, than people uh, over here on average. And uh, what does your book get into? Because I haven't had a chance to read it. I have ordered it. I do intend to read uh, your latest book. I read one of your earlier books, uh, but uh, what is your uh, latest book about the gift of your children dealing with? Well, Alex, I've had, you know, failures in my life, had a few triumphs in my life, so I realized I better write this down, and it started out as a magazine article in Japan, actually, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more articles, and so we turned it into a book. It's things I have learned over my life, things to do, things to do. I came to parenthood late. Alex, I was always against being a parent. I felt sorry for my friends who had children. I couldn't believe what a horrible waste of time, energy, money children were. I was so wrong, so, so, so wrong, uh, which I came to realize. And I, so I started this stuff down as a way to give it to my children, some of my lo losses, some of my successes. And it's a little book with things to do, things to watch out for. And hopefully in 30 or 40 years, these little girls will be very successful and happy because of some of the things that father taught them. Well, I agree with you that something chemical happened when I had children where I started working harder, making better decisions, more focused. Something chemical happens when you have children. I've got a son and two daughters. And uh, really, I think you, you stop even thinking about yourself so much and now see things in a global view of the future of those children. But then not just those children, you start seeing all the other future generations as the human community. And you realize the one way we all do live forever is if this species makes it. And when we allow a bunch of collectivist control freaks to run society, I'm not sure that humanity is going to survive. What's your view on the human species overall, Jim? Alex, as you mentioned before, I've driven around the world twice, once on a motorcycle, once in a car. I spent five years seeing the world close to the ground. I'm optimistic about mankind. Mankind has survived unbelievable setbacks in our history. You know, the Sahara Desert, used to be farmland it's now the size of the u.s well mankind survived that change you can go lots of places you'll see societies which disappeared countries cities nations totally disappeared but mankind has always survived hasn't been fun we've had some terrible wars epidemics plagues but man kind of i'm confident of that i mean i'm not a environmentalist by any stretch, because I know mankind's going to survive. No matter how foolish we are to each other, we will survive. It may not be in New York City, but mankind's gonna survive somewhere, and our grandchildren and great, great, great grandchildren are gonna be living somewhere, surviving, and being very happy. Jim, I wanna look at Europe and what's happening with the crisis over there, and then any other points you wanna make, and we really 
appreciate your time and look forward to now that you've offered to come on sometimes during your hour and a half exercise regimen we would love to do an extended uh, exercise class and and, uh, and and financial guru discussion with Jim Rogers of jimrogers.com and of course we'll also be posting this at infowars.com but look at the London Telegraph the EU's architects never meant it to be a democracy the rise of a technocracy has always been part of the plan for Europe Here's another one, Time Magazine, do Greece and Italy amount to a banker's coup? You know, I look at this, they talk about $100 billion that Greece owes, and they do have a big out-of-control welfare state. Then they get $1.4 trillion, they plan to leverage it into derivatives, and uh, now they're announcing, oh, we want this European super state that the countries can't leave, and the collectivist bureaucrats owned by the big mega banks are saying they're going to raise everybody's taxes to pay off the giant debts that the mega banks have accrued, and then the mega banks threaten to sue the welfare class on the middle class if they don't pay up the ransom. I, I mean, uh, I mean, is Goldman Sachs trying to destroy the world or take it over? Or what's your view on this authoritarian superstate power grab they're involved in in the name of saving the European Union? Alex, you're exactly right. What? What unfortunately is happening for all of us is the politicians are trying to keep their jobs. The bankers are trying to keep their jobs. Everybody's trying to keep their jobs. Unfortunately, eventually the money runs out and it's running out. The world, the Western world anyway, for the past 50 years has been spending huge amounts of money it doesn't have. We've made many mistakes, but to keep doing that, you have to restrict people's freedom more and more because you want their money. So you can keep your job and you can continue to buy votes. It's not good. It's not going to work. As I said, there'll be more social unrest, more governments failing. But in the meantime, everybody says, give me, give me, give me. You promise me this. As I said, eventually the money runs out and the world's going to find that out. Now, Alex, I, while Europe has huge problem and is making a lot of mistakes. We in the U.S. have worse problems. We're a deeper debtor, a bigger debtor than Europe. Alex, may I suggest you move to Asia? Call your wife. Tell her, tell her we'll meet her at the airport. And because uh, in Asia, people save and invest over 30 percent of their income from dawn to dusk. They don't expect a free lunch. The largest creditor nations in the world, Alex, are China, Korea, Japan. Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, you know who the largest debtors are and where they are. I don't like saying it, Alex. I'm an American voter, citizen, here, but people have to face reality, and we're losing more and more of our freedoms daily in the name of democracy. Ah. Incredible. Uh, and, and, and it's sad to have to talk like this, but, but we have to recognize the problems if we're ever going to fix them. Why do you think they've set up this whole Homeland Security grid? Because I was sent by law enforcement three years ago, the MIAC and Homeland Security reports that made national news, where internally it's not about Arab extremists or any of that. The whole thing was gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, in the fetters, Ron Paul supporters, but mainly people that don't like the Federal Reserve cartel. And then now we've got all these police training videos where they actually pack them in and actually demonize the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Judges are saying in court, I don't want to hear that damn Constitution, actually using that as a quote. Uh, I mean, for me, Homeland Security is the rear guard action by the crony capitalist who know they've committed all these crimes and want to try to bring a police state in to protect themselves uh, from the population. What's your view on that statement? Well, Alex, you, you, you're right. It's just a study of history that as governments, people, countries start out very democratic, democratic with lots of freedoms. But then in order to maintain, you have to get some more money. And the way you get more money is you start restricting people. I don't like saying it, as I said, but, you know, we in America have lost more and more of our freedoms from what we had once upon a time. It's getting worse. They're now in our bank accounts. They're in our bedrooms. They're in our garage. Everywhere. They can come and do whatever they want to without a search warrant anymore. I mean, the, some of the things that have been happening, if you had said 50 years ago, 80 years ago in America, they're going to come into your house without a search warrant. 
I mean, they would have laughed. They would, they would have paid no attention to you, whatever. These things are wrong now, Alex. It's part of the gradual decline of democracy and individual liberty. Yeah, I don't like saying it. The one's got to face reality. Well, now they're saying they're going to put microphones and cameras in the street lamps uh, and, and, and have forced inoculations. I mean, it just, it seems to never end. Uh, Jim, in the time we've got left with you, and I'm, and I'm very thankful for your time, and hopefully this can be the first of many interviews, because Jim Rogers, uh, if you just t uh, tuned in, Mr. Uh, Rogers, uh, is one of the preeminent uh, geopolitical analysts when it comes to breaking down uh, past trends, current trends, and future trends. And he's, he's proven that with all of his uh, uh, investing success and the different funds he has. Uh, I mean, I understand that you've given a lot of advice, you know, in the last few years that has proven very successful on commodities and things like that because of global concerted devaluation of currencies. But uh, speaking to people, you know, uh, out there who are laymen and don't understand this, can you break down why you're saying get into commodities versus even so much uh, stocks in the future and uh, break down uh, kind of a region by region uh, uh, pr uh, perspective on what you see is coming? Well, Alex, my own, my family and my portfolio is mainly commodities and current, especially agricultural commodities and precious metals. We own all commodities because the great shortage is developing. For 20, 30 years, we had a, a big bear market in commodities. Very little money was spent on productive capacity. The last lead smelter built in America was built in 1960. I could go to the average age of farmers in America. It's 58 years old. In Japan, it's 66. We have huge supply problems facing us with all commodities. So that's why I'm long. If the world economy gets better, I'm going to make money because there's shortages. But if the world economy doesn't get better, I'd rather own commodities, real assets, because they're going to print more money. Plus, you have shortages. You know, in the 70s, world economy was in trouble everywhere, nearly everywhere. And stock markets did nothing for 20 years. Yet if you owned commodities, you made a huge fortune. We had one of the great bull markets in world history in commodities at a time when economies and stock markets were in the tank. So we own commodities because I expect there to be more shortages, more problems, more money printing, and that's how you protect yourself. I have sold short emerging market stocks, European stocks, American technology stocks, because I see more and more problems coming. And the way to protect yourself, in my view, is to own real assets, whether it's silver or rice, whatever. Get yourself some real assets. Uh, Jim, specifically for just say somebody who makes sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year uh, working here in the United States, um, you know, running their own little business or something, they obviously aren't going to be able to run out and buy farmland. Um, but and, and they're not going to be able to buy a whole bunch of silver. But even a little bit would help, wouldn't it? Uh, where do you? Uh, what's your outlook on silver right now versus gold? Well, I own both. I'd rather own, if I had to buy one today, I would buy silver because gold is near its all-time high. Silver is 30% below its all-time high. I'm not bad buying either today, Alex. But if one, I would buy silver. And if you don't own any raw materials, commodities, go out and buy yourself some silver, even, even at today's prices, because you got to get started. And yes, sixty or $70,000, you got to, your money's got to be somewhere. I'd rather have it in real assets and currencies, which are being debated daily around the world. Looking at the Federal Reserve briefly, uh, Ron Paul's a big critic of it because of the secrecy and because of the fact that they obviously help out uh, insiders. Uh, but th they've got a big PR campaign going. They've been on record now publicly attacking um, folks that uh, are upset about their crony capitalist anti-free market policies. Now some memos and documents have come out that they're basically going after Ron Paul and others behind the scenes. They are creating a database of Americans that criticize them. That came out a few months ago. What is your view, not just on the Federal Reserve, but its 
its, its, its European Central Bank counterparts, and now they're open calls for a banking world government uh, run by the very same people that have gotten us into this Ponzi scheme? Well, I don't think world government will last, will work, because I've been around the world twice, and too many different kinds of people are not going to put up with a single dictator anywhere. That would be, that's not practical. Somebody could try it, it will not work. Napoleon tried it, lots of people have tried it. It's not going to work, I assure you. Um, but as far as central banks, in America, we've had three central banks in our history. The first two disappeared. This one's going to disappear too, Alex, because they keep absurd mistakes. I mean, five years ago, the American Central Bank had $800 billion of government bonds on its balance sheet. Now it's got over or nearly $3 trillion of garbage on its balance sheet. They've been buying up all the garbage in sight to save their Wall Street friends. And that's Timothy McGuigner, for instance, the Treasury Secretary, because he bailed out all his friends on Wall Street. So they said, to Obama, give him the job, give him the job. So central banks around the world, for the most part, are not doing a good job. And they'll be, we'll get rid of them. The world without central banks will have problems, as we learned. But unfortunately, a world with central banks, or like the Fed anyway, and the Bank of England, are going to be worse. They're running up staggering debts that you and I have to pay for, and our children, and they're printing huge amounts of money. So they're going to destroy themselves. Between Greensky, they will definitely destroy themselves. But in the meantime, we have to put up with them. Now, there's some central banks that are reasonably good. We just happen to live in a country which to, uh, be citizens of a country which doesn't have a sound central bank. Jim Rogers is our guest, and he's again, been uh, very gracious with his time, jimrogers.com. If you're just tuning in for the first time, I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. We're using the Infowar to fight the creation of a global dictatorship, a prison planet. Uh, the Chinese said last year that the U.S. would probably lose its AAA+. Plus. Now it's gone to AAA. Uh, I know I remember reading articles where you uh, were commenting on that as well. Uh, now we have seen that happen. Geithner said it would never happen, and the Chinese laughed at him. Uh, when he said we won't devalue the dollar at, at that uh, university, they laughed at him, what, two, three years ago. Now the Chinese government and others are saying, look for another downgrade. Uh, and uh, Obama has come out and admitted that Americans are lazy sometimes. He means his supporters are, not, not the average American actually paying for his supporters. Uh, but uh, what is your view on the downgrade? And after the Federal Reserve and the insiders have destroyed America, will any of them go to jail like Bernie Madoff? Because he said, hey, when I got to Wall Street, I learned at this level, it's all a Ponzi scheme. And uh, so I guess Ken Lay and Bernie Madoff, I mean, uh, I mean, are they just smaller players in, 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 in the same system that's become totally criminal? So your view on the downgrading and then Bernie Madoff? Well, Alex, first of all, if you should not listen to Geithner, go back and look at his record. He's never, ever been right about anything. It's a start. Look at uh, Bernanke. He's been in Washington seven or eight years. The man has never been right. It's terrifying. And yet people pay attention to him day after day. What, four years ago, the Federal Reserve, the head chief economist at the Federal Reserve wrote a scathing paper saying all the people who say that housing is going to be a problem and we're going to have serious problems in America are nuts. How can they possibly say things like that? We have hundreds of the best PhDs in the world working for the Federal Reserve. We are a lot smarter than any of them, and they're nuts. You know the rest of that story. It keeps happening. The guys have gotten it totally wrong. Keep getting it worse, get getting more and more wrong, and making things worse for all of us. You look at the head of the former head of Fannie Mae. Totally crooked accounting, total fraud, sham. Guys walking around with tens of millions of dollars. He yanked out of the system. No, nobody's put in jail. Not touching because he's a big. The politi political type living in Washington with lots of friends, and Fannie Mae at one time was the largest contributor to politicians in America. So no, if you're connected with the right people, unfortunately, you won't walk away. Nobody touched.
uh, Madoff obviously was a criminal, obviously should be in jail, but there are lots of other people who should be in jail too. Unfortunately, I'm afraid the ones in Washington are not going to go to jail. It's not, it's not good. It's not, not at all the way the system is supposed to work. It's happened now. You know, 10 years ago, America used to complain about crony capitalism in Asia. Boy, Asia has nothing like the crony capitalism in Washington, D.C. Well, Jim, things always seem to get a lot worse before they get better, and that's what's scary is historically from studying history. We've got so much further to fall before people actually wake up, but I think Ron Paul being so popular and uh, my website being so popular, your information being so popular, I think is a testament that we're beginning to turn the tide. I do see the beginning of a very deep, uh, you know, really huge awakening uh, taking place. Uh, in closing, I mean, are, are, are you starting to see the beginnings of that same awakening, or what's your view on that? Well, of course, because things are getting worse. But unfortunately, Alex, if you study history, you will see that countries that get themselves into this kind of bond don't really do anything until there's a crisis or a semi-crisis. We haven't had a, even a semi-crisis yet. But, as I said before, we're heading that way, and maybe when we, things get really, really, really bad, we'll react and do something. The risk, of course, is that throughout history, people have often reacted to the crisis or the semi-crisis with a man on a white horse, a strong general, a strong dictator. America's getting more and more uh, dictatorial in our policies and our practices. And look at all the push for war. Look at, I mean, briefly, what's your view on all the warmongering? Well, I would not be involved with any of these wars in my book. I wrote much to my children. I said, everybody who's been in your family since the revolution has served in the military, including me. <clears throat> but when the next war comes, just get away from the war. Nobody's ever won a war. Even the people who think they've won a war, wars are not good. They destroy humans capital, everything. So I've urged my children to stay away from wars. I'm probably more anti-war than anybody you know, <coughs> because wars have never been good for anybody except a few generals who win. Yeah, as Fenley Butler said, uh, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, war is a racket, and it took him a long time to finally figure that out. Uh, Jim Roger, let me just say bye to you as the show ends here. You've been very gracious to spend this much time with us uh, while you're working out, and, uh, and I would love to have you back up when you're uh, uh, done traveling here in the next month uh, on uh, to uh, talk about uh, all the other issues uh, that you're researching. Uh, JimRogers.com, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Wow, folks, it looks really nice there with the jungle behind him. <laughs> Texas is great, too, but I tell you, I tell you, uh, the, 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 the sirens call to get out of Dodge, but uh, we're going to try to save this republic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you so much for watching tonight. We had Jason Burmis, investigative journalist, on earlier. If you missed it, getting into the whole Penn State cover-up and local newspapers with a headline. Is uh, this whole thing a state secret? Because it goes a lot deeper. And we, of course, covered all the censorship of Ron Paul because they're scared of those ideas. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War. Hopefully, we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central. God bless.